All right, y'all, we're back with another Starbase Daily Summary for August 25th through 27th, 2024. Gonna kick it off with the chopsticks. A lot of work has been happening out there on the chopsticks. Here you can see they were removing the stops that are intended, from, uh, intended to keep those from closing too far when they're trying to do the catch. Got some netting happening over on Tower 2. Boy, did I get an earful for saying Tower B. Uh, from Jack, apparently. Surprised they didn't make Starbase update. You can see over here, they were removing a tank from the chopsticks. It really does seem like they just have an awful lot of work that they've been doing here. It's a little hard to point out exactly where that is. But here goes another tank. Look for that crane there, then you can sort of see it coming down. That yellow crane in the middle, there it went. Just went behind the OLM. Look at this. Love the Star Factory, the windows looking into the Star Factory. The nose cone there, you can see those uh, orange stickers. They're almost like inspection stickers, right? Remember the shuttle tiles all had individual numbers on them, right? The big thing, oh, there's this huge graph and every tile is individually numbered. And here, this thing's like on a rotisserie. It's sort of turning while they work on it. And uh, they have green and orange stickers, I guess, showing what they need to look at on those tiles. Oh, here's a time lapse. It's going to be Lazy Susan for starships. Oh, it goes both ways. How cool is that? I like that robotic arm on the side there, too. I wonder if that's for installing pins, or I don't think it's for placing tiles. Just gratuitous shots from Mary here of nose cones being worked in the factory. They didn't have to put those windows in, y'all. We've got a Starbase Sunrise signature move. From Boca Chica Gal, Mary again. Crane's doing some work there, too. Back towards the production site. The office building almost has all the glass on that uh, launch site facing side. And looking back in to Ship 31's tile replacement over here. Look at that. They're almost all the way up the top. Every time I talk to y'all, they get a little bit higher up there. And they've almost got the cap on it. A little rust on the building there. Look at that rusty support. Those, like, flying buttress supports or whatever they're called. You've got a wiggly lift. Has anybody in the comments ever been in one of those lifts? Do you understand how much those lifts move around when it's a little windy and you're next to like a fixed object? I've only been up like 15 feet one of our towers uh, and that was enough. It's like I'm just trying to you know, connect this bolt and the whole thing swaying back and forth. It really adds a uh, new dimension <laughs> to working out there at Starbase. The scaffolding is a little easier, right? But you don't have the mobility on the scaffolding. It takes longer to put it up, take it down. You only have it at these specific places, whereas that big windy lift there, you can basically put it wherever you need to on the ship. Like Ship 30 back here. There's a hole in the side, right? Do you see the little hole that the, the blue lift is next to? And they actually can enter into there, and they there you go. Hey, there's a close-up. So I believe we saw people actually going into there. What they're working on, who knows? But a couple different angles of that. I'm, I'm surprised there's not ventilation. Maybe there's ground ventilation or something because usually you've got to have a big air conditioner hose to make sure that confined space. There's all sorts of rules for working safely in confined spaces and the interior of the Starship, I believe would definitely qualify. More Star Factory expansion. We reach all the way over just about to the office building. I think we expect it to connect one day. I don't know if it's going to be just a sky bridge or what, but, you know, we shall see. I should just about connect it already. Look at that. Down at the bottom, you can see. Back over looking from the dunes by the launch site. It looks so different without the vertical tanks. They took down all of the vertical tanks and it looks way different. Do a double take on the lime green umbrella there in the middle. It's like, what in the heck is that? It's, what's a shade? Maybe it's safety orange, safety yellow. So there, it, it, 
in the middle, I wish I could draw on these, honestly. I don't know if I have time to do that, but in the middle of that shot, there were some uh, missing stops. We'll probably see more of those in a second. More work on those braces they were installing. Here they're sort of up underneath the chopsticks. Just a massive amount of work. I mean, look at this. <laughs> look at all of the lifts around the chopsticks. There's, I guess the OLM's got one there, maybe two on the backside, but... You know something? They said the uh, vehicles were ready for flight. I don't think that the launch mount was ready for catch, though. A little close-up of the chopsticks carriage. Remember, it rides up and down the tower on rail systems. You can kind of see them there in that shot. People in the silhouette. When somebody's silhouetted like that, it gives you the sense of scale. Sometimes, like here, you see the people that are sort of hidden in there underneath the ship cutie. It's, it's tough to see them. But when they're standing up on top of a booster, on top of a rail, you really get a sense of scale of how big this equipment is. So this was some padding. That they, I don't know if padding is the right terminology, but that that's what we've called it here. It's almost like they're just adding a lot of different... I'm not going to say random things, right? But just a lot of different little things. I don't know if they'd be tweaks, but just things that they're trying to do to make the catch successful. You sort of glance at it, it's almost like, is there any rhyme or reason to all of this work? Clearly there is. It's just a lot. They almost look like big crumple zones, right? That? Is that a torque wrench? I, d I mean, it looked like he was adjusting the end of it, but that th I don't think that it actually is. Now he's grinding off pieces of it. It looked like he was adjusting a torque wrench for a second, but I'm almost positive that's not what it is. <laughs> what do y'all think it is? Again, as we go through this, I'm, I'm not trying to explain everything in depth. I'm literally watching the video just like you are and just talking about things that I think are interesting. This is the top of the cutie hood here. The guy's actually sitting on top of it, welding there, and that's the big hood that tries to protect the uh, quick disconnect down, down to the booster level, right? It's sort of in the middle of the, the blue lifts there. It's just like the attendance to the orbital launch mount and the launch tower. A little sir, machinery in waiting, maybe. All those cameras in the upper right-hand corner. There they are in the middle of the screen now. Oh, got some PTZ action over on the left-hand side, it looks like. That big positioning mount. I bet you that's a Moog positioning mount. And another wide shot of both towers. Don't forget that second tower in the background. So that's going to be it for this week's. Again, if you really want the detailed explanations of what's going on, make sure you check out Starbase Update comes out every Monday and Jack is there with a fantastic script written by folks like Alex and Adrian and, and Ryan Weber that keep track of that stuff. But for now, uh, make sure you don't miss that. This has been our Stardase. Wow. <laughs> this has been our Starbase summary of the dailies and we'll catch you later.